Hey guys, and welcome to the Command Tower, where we make EDH stack techs. If you enjoy this video, so make sure to like and subscribe. Also, check out our TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. If you use it, it helps us out a lot. Anyway, today's deck is Lesa Shroud of Dusk. Lesa is a 5 5 that says, rather than pay 2 for each previous time you've cast a spell from the command zone this game, pay 2 life that many times, and is flying and lifelink. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose 2 life. So we're just going to focus on making players lose a ton of life, while also gaining us a ton of life at the same time. The total price of this deck is $29.40, this is according to TCG player, and does not include the price of basic clans. So let's get right into the deck. First off, we got Ram. Marble Diamond enters the battlefield tapped and taps are white, and Charcoal Diamond does the same for black. Orzhov Signet, pay one tap it, you go both the Orzhov colors. Cryptolift Fragment. Enters the battlefield tapped. Tap it, you add one man of any color to your mana pool, and each player loses life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if each player has 10 or less life, you transform it. And transformed, it has flying and death touch. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses 3 life. Oroska Relic. Ascend. Taps your colorless. Tap it, sacrifice it, and you gain 3 life and draw a card. But only if, if you have the city's blessing. Hero Fonts Chalice. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life, and you gain a life. Which is what you want to do in the deck. Taps are colorless. And pristine talisman, taps are colorless and you gain a life, so you can keep ahead of your opponent's life. Commander Sphere, taps are one man of any color, sacrifice and draw a card. Orzov Locket, taps with Orzov color, and if you pay four in Orzov colors, tap it, sacrifice it, draw two cards. And Orzov Clue Stone, taps are Orzov, and you pay both to Orzov and tap and sacrifice it, you draw a card. Then we got some life drain. So basically, your opponents are going to lose life, and then you're going to gain some life. Suture Priest. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, and you can gain a life. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you can have that player lose a life. Drawn as an Emissary. Flying at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses a life, and you gain a life. Gonti's Machinations. Whenever you lose a life for the first time in each turn, you get an energy counter. Which we're not playing any thing with energy counters. But you're going to lose life when you cast spells with your commander, so you're going to get a bunch of energy counters. And then you pay two energy counters and you sacrifice it, each opponent loses three life and you gain life equals the life loss this way, so you're going to gain nine life. Revenge of Raisins. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain a life, so it's going to slow people down because they're not going to want to attack you, they're going to lose a bunch of life. Scholar of Athreos. You pay 3, each opponent loses a life, and you gain life equals a life loss this way. So if you just have extra mana, you can use that. Palace Seed. You choose Cons or Dragons when it comes in. Cons at the beginning of your upkeep, return to our creature card from your graveyard or hand. Or dragons at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. Grey, Virgin of Afsadl. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. And you gain life equals life loss this way. Debt to the Deathless is a good way to finish off a game. Each opponent loses two times X life, and you life gain life equals to the life losses way. Revival to Revenge. Return target creature card with your burn mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, which you probably won't do. Or Revenge is double your life total, and target opponent loses half their life rounded up, which is going to be super useful because you're going to get way ahead, and you're going to slow someone way down. Then we've got some cards that have Extort. Extort says, whenever you cast a spell, you can pay a black or a white. If you do, each opponent loses one life, and you gain that much life. So this is going to be really good, because you're going to be casting spells, and if you just pay one mana, each opponent's going to lose a life, and you're going to be gaining three life if you still have three opponents. So, Thrall Parasite has Extort. Tap it, pay two life, and you can remove a counter from target non-land permanent. Tithe Drinker has lifelink and Extort. Basilica Screecher has Flying and Extort. Syndic of Tithes just has Extort. Basilica Guards has Defender and Extort. Kingpin's Pet has Flying and Extort. And then Pontiff of Blight has Extort. And then it says other creatures you control have Extort. So you're just going to have a ton of triggers, and people are just going to be losing a ton of life if you pay the mana. Then we got some cards that are going to make an opponent lose life, but you're not going to gain life from it. Bloodseeker. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your opponent's control, you can have that player lose a life. Chalice of Life of Chalice to Death. So Chalice of Life, you tap it, you gain a life, 
Then if you have at least 10 more life than your starting life total, you transform it. Which, you might not, but still, getting to gain life is good. And then Chalice of Death, you tap it and target player loses 5 life. Isolation Cell, this is a really good card, because it's like your commander. Whenever an opponent casts a creature spell, that player loses 2 life, unless he or she pays 2 mana. Fate Unraveler, whenever an opponent draws a card, it deals 1 damage to that player, which is going to hurt blue players a lot. And First Response, which isn't really losing life, but it says at the beginning of each upkeep, if you lost life last turn, create a 1-1, which whenever you cast spell, you're going to lose life, so you're going to be creating a lot of 1-1s. Then we got a couple cards that are either going to gain you life, or benefit off of you gaining life. Soul Warden, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life. Healer's Hawk has flying and lifelink, and it's 1 1, so it's just overall pretty good. Viscopa Guild Mage, you pay 3, target creature gains lifelink until end of turn, or you pay 3, whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life, which is going to be really good with extort cards if you cast a couple spells. Angel of Vitality, flying, if you gain life, you gain that much plus 1, which is going to keep you ahead of your opponent's life total. And it gets plus two plus two as long as you have twenty more five or more life. Indulging Patrician has flying and life link. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses three life. So it's gonna life train your opponents, and you're gonna get life. Cradle Vitality, whenever you gain life, you can pay two. If you do, put a one one counter on target creature you for each one life you gained. And your commander has flying, so it'd be good to put it on, and it has a life link. So, you're going to attack with your commander once it's bigger, and you're going to get a ton of life back. Light of Promise, Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature has, whenever you gain life, put that many 1-1 counters on it. And Sun Bond does the same thing. Beacon of Immortality, you double target player's life total, and you shuffle it into your deck. So you're going to double your life total, and you're just going to be way ahead of your opponents. Since our commander is probably going to be a target because it's making players lose life, we're going to have three ways that you can protect it. Malachir Rebirth, you choose a creature and you lose to life, until end of turn that creature gains, whenever this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its own control. So if someone tries to kill it, you can play this row on mana, protect your commander. But also, the back side of it is a land that enters the battlefield tapped and taps for black. So if you don't have your commander out, you can play as a land. Benevolent Blessing, Flash, Enchant Creature, when it enters the battlefield you choose a color, Chained Creature has protection from the cho chosen color. This effect doesn't remove ores and equipments you control that are already attached to it. So basically, if someone goes to kill your commander again, you just play it on it. Sahiri Shelter. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until in a turn. And once again, the back side is a land, and just a battlefield tap that taps her white. Then we got some card advantage. Read the bones, you scry two and draw two cards and lose two life. Ancient Craving. You draw 3 cards and lose 3 life. Demo Pact. Target player draws 6 cards and loses X life. Necrologia. It's a really good card. You can only play it on your end step. An additional cost to play it, you pay any amount of life. And you draw cards equal to life paid this way. So, you can just draw 5 or 6 cards for 5 or 6 life. And get back up to 7. Survival Cash. You gain 2 life, then if you have more life than opponent, you draw a card and it has rebound, and you probably will have more life than opponent, because you're going to be getting life and they're going to be losing life. Underworld Connections, Enchant Land, Enchant Land has tap, pay one life, draw a card. Arguals Bloodfast, you pay two and pay two life and draw a card, and you'll have life to spare. At the your upkeep, if you have five less life, you transform it, and there's a good chance you could go below five life because a lot of damage is going to be going around, and it transforms into Temple of Aklazots. That's an interesting name. And it taps for black. And you tap sacrifice a creature and you gain life equal to sacrifice creature's toughness. Staff of Nin. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card and you tap. It deals one damage to any target. And then Lore Seeker Stone. Pay three and tap it and draw three cards. And it costs one more to activate for each card in your hand. You're probably going to go three cards in your hand pretty fast. So it should only cost three. And then Dawn of Hope, whenever you gain life, you can pay two, if you do, draw a card, and you're going to be gaining a lot of life. If you pay four, you create a 1-1 one -one with lifelink. Then we got removal. Omnixilus the Hate Twisted, 
Whenever an opponent draws a card, he does one damage to that player. If you minus two, you destroy a creature and its controller draws two cards. So you get to destroy creatures and deal damage. Profane Procession. Pay five, exile target creature. Then if there's three or more cards exiled with it, you transform it. When transformed, it transforms into Tomb of the Dusk Girls. And it taps a one mana beat color. Or you pay four and tap it, put a creature card exiled with it onto the battlefield under your control. Fonts of Agonies. Whenever you pay life, you put that many blood counters on it. Which you're going to get a lot of blood counters because you're paying life to cast spells with the commander. You pay two, move four blood counters from it, you destroy a creature. Which is a lot of value. Pillory of the Sleepless. Enchant creature. Can enchant a creature, can attack or block. Enchant creature has, at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life. 1000 Lashes. Enchant a creature, and it can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. At the beginning of the upkeep of Enchanted Creature's controller, that player loses one life. Divine Offering, you destroy an artifact and you gain life equal to its converted mana cost. Tarashi's Grasp is the same, both artifacts and enchantments. Solemn Offering, destroy an artifact or enchantment and you gain four life. These are just going to help you get your life up. Then Hour of Revelation, costs three less to cast if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield. Then you destroy all non-land permanents. Kai's Wrath, and then you destroy all creatures, and you gain life equal number of creatures you control that were destroyed this way. Lastly, we got lands. Orzhov Guildgate enters the battlefield tap and taps for Orzhov. Forsaken Sanctuary is the same. Scoured Barrens is the same, but it enters the battlefield you gain a life. Orzhov Basilica enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you return a land you control to its owner's hand. Taps for both the Orzhov colors. Command Tower taps for one man of each color. Opal Palace, taps your colorless, or if you pay one, tap it, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity, and then if you spend this mana, cast your commander, and just battlefield with the number one one counters on an equal number of times it's been cast from the commands on this game. Which, your commander might die a lot, but since you can pay life to make it cheaper, you're going to cast it a lot, so you can bring it up with, with a lot of one one counters on. Sunscorched Desert, when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target player, Taps are colorless. Radiant Fountain, and just battlefield to gain two life and taps are colorless. Computer Crossroads, and just battlefield tapped. Well, and just battlefield you gain two life and it taps are white. And then we just got 14 planes and 13 swamps. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and have a great day.